How did we get to this point, you ask? Stick around, I'll show you. done a few things in your absence. First of all, I got my uh, tuners in. I'm kind of partial kind of partial to these guys. No affiliation, no sponsorship, none of that obviously. Um, they just kind of seem to hit the sweet spot for me price wise and performance wise. I like the 18 to ones. Um, these actually are locking. Um, never used these before, so I don't know if that'll make a big difference or not, but we're going to give them a try. Took an old neck I have. I've been using it for a template. I typically use the same style of tuner on everything, at least in regards to electric, so I can pretty much use this as a template. Something to be aware of if you're making your own guitar, using your own style of headstock, Make sure you lay it out, draw it out, make sure your strings uh, actually line up with your tuners. Um, so for example, your, uh, your B string doesn't hit your E string tuner as it's going um, uh, to the tuning post. Just think that stuff through so it, it looks good, makes sense, and you don't have that interference because that's really hard to recover from. Um, if, if you do that. So I back drilled these, I uh, marked them out using that neck as a template, reverse drilled it, kind of see how it is uh, maybe burned a little bit, but hopefully that'll keep it from chipping as you go into it. We're going to see here in a minute. Uh, we'll get those drilled out and then we'll move on to the next thing. Here we go. There we go. No blowout in the back, didn't tear it up, didn't chip it out on the top, so that's good. If you do happen to chip it out a little bit, uh, remember there's washers typically around your tuners that'll hold some of that or hide some of that. Rather, uh, there's ways to fix that if you can, you know, glue a piece of uh, a sliver of wood in there if you had to, but. Uh, best option is not to uh, do it in the first place. So next we're going to talk about my inlay. I do it a little bit non-traditionally. Some of you may have noticed that this is lasered out. I have a guy do a whole bunch of headstock overlays for me at one time, different species of woods, and he, he lasers them out like that with my logo. Rather than inlaying like mother of pearl or anything like that, I uh, I mix up epoxy, and in this case we're going to use epoxy and aluminum. It gives you kind of a silver finish, and I'll show you how we're going to do that right now. We've taped off the area that we're going to inlay here. This is an example of the metal powder. You can get it in all kinds of different colors. Gold. I, I, you know, bronze, brass, copper. Uh, again, got no sponsors, so if you Google metal inlay powder, you're going to come up with uh, probably half a dozen places easily where you can get this stuff. I use a clear epoxy. This particular brand is PC Clear. I've bought, uh, I've tried several different kinds. You just want to test it before you use it for your inlay. Make sure it doesn't yellow. I've had some that 
supposedly are clear, but they dry to a yellow. Um, I've used this several times now. It uh, seems to stand the test of time. I've got it in some older guitars, 10 years old now, and they're still holding up. They haven't changed color, any of that sort of thing. Uh, of course, it's not to say the manufacturer can't change his specs at some point, so you always want to test a little bit of it before you put it on your guitar. Just like mixing sawdust with glue, same process. Get yourself some of your some of your epoxy out there. This is actually some pretty quick setting stuff. Dump some powder in it. Well, obviously this isn't structural, so there is no rhyme or reason to the mixture. Just saturate it. You're going to sand it down anyway, so it'll be nice and smooth and glossy. So start, uh, start putting her in there. I don't remember if I mentioned it, but I've got the tape on here just to kind of control my mess. Stuff is uh, definitely more difficult to clean up. It's, it's going to be more, more difficult to sand than the wood itself. It does typically shrink just a little bit as it dries, but you're also going to sand the you're also going to sand the face of your um, headstock here. So uh, it all seems to work out. But I want to just make sure I have enough in there. in it. Okay, and there we go. Okay, you can see that. Once that's dried, we're going to come back and we'll sand it flat. And then I'll put a gloss into it, blend it into your, the face of your headstock. pretty nice. Well it's a little bit later. This is drying. It's uh, pretty solid. I'm not quite uh, comfortable sanding it yet. I'll probably wait till tomorrow for that but um, it's hard enough that we can do some other things here. I think the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a quick quick fret level we're not going to dress and we're not going to crown them yet. A lot of that will come. We're going to spray this whole neck, fretboard and all. Um, when we go to clear it, we'll stain it. We'll shoot clear on it. And then we'll come back and we'll actually crown and uh, dress the frets. And that will get any of the clear coat off the frets too at the same time. So uh, we'll do that all at once. So... For the moment, if you're doing this, you want to make sure your, your fretboard's flat, at least the way I do it. And that may require you to adjust your, your truss rod a little bit. I had to give this one about oh, a quarter turn or so 
maybe a little bit more. It had kind of got a bow in it. I don't know if that was me hammering the frets in or just the shape of it or whatnot. But you want it, you want it nice and flat when you're starting to do any fret work like this. So I have this aluminum bar. Nothing special about it other than uh, it's very flat. Checked it with a bunch of different rulers, straight edges. All comes up the same. The interesting thing is this side is very flat. This side has a little bit of a, a hump to it, so I've kind of actually labeled it. It's uh, getting wore off at this point. But So if you're going to do something like that, you find yourself a nice flat bar and you think you're going to use it again, make sure you label the side that's good for you. Another thing I'm going to have to watch here is my sandpaper is pretty old, so my stickum, I don't know, doesn't seem to want to stick. So you want to keep an eye on that, make sure it doesn't kind of flop off on you. So anyway, um, pretty self-explanatory. You're just, you're not taking a bunch of material off. You're just working the tops of the frets so they're all roughly the same height. This is 320 grit, so it's not terribly aggressive, but it, it will remove some material. So we just kind of work it a little bit. What you're really looking for is every fret to have a little bit taken off it. If you've got, hey buddy, if you've got a fret somewhere that you're not seeing that it's, it's uh, scuffing the top of it and you'll you'll notice it's very noticeable because it'll become dull it won't be all shiny like your typical fret so you're looking to make sure every single one of them is getting touched by that to begin with and then when you're look out buddy and then as you're working it across you want to feel for anything catching on the ends because that indicates a high fret. One thing I do want to mention, when you're, when you're sanding like that, make sure you keep moving. You're following the arch of the neck. Don't just sit in one spot and just sand away. Then if you do that, you're going to lose your radius. You'll, you'll have a flat spot in your, in your fret. Make sure you're working it across the neck side to side, just so it all kind of blends together. That's what you're looking for. Okay, now we, we've really got to, we've really got to stop doing this. Can we do that? Can we just focus on something else? No, no, we can't. Of all the parts of building a guitar, I think I like sanding the neck the most. Because you've got all this work invested in it, and up until this point, it's just this rough piece of wood. And when you're done, it's going to be the thing that when you pick up a guitar, you really interact with. You know, it's the thing that can make or break that guitar. It's not the paint, it's not the pickups, it's not the electronics. It's the neck, or at least to me it is. If you don't have a good neck, if it doesn't feel right, it's uh, not going to work. So this is the part I really like, because it really lets you get in and work it and shape it to your specifications. And really, if it works for you, then it's right. Since watching me sand is probably even more painful than watching paint dry, I'm going to skip ahead here in a second. That being said, let's get sanded. Well, there we go. We've taken it to 100 grit. You can see how our logo is kind of dull. That'll really pop once we shoot the clear on it. Look nice and silver. I'm very happy with the neck. It's very comfortable. A little bit chunky. Not too fat. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I think next time we're going to work on getting the body working on marrying that to the neck. I know I've got to do a little relieving here in the back of the neck to get that to fit. 
and we've got to do some sanding on the body. In case you haven't figured out, building a guitar is a lot of sanding. So, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it. If it inspired you to build your own or you have any comments, feel free to throw them down below. I always like to hear those. Till next time, we'll catch you later.